my first question for you is um, where did it all begin for you? Where did your interest in um, performing theatre, music, where does that come from? I honestly can't remember a time when I sort of wasn't doing it because I went to dance lessons from the age of I think three maybe three or four I started going to ballet um ballet and tap like super obviously baby lessons and I just sort of didn't stop like <laughs> just what you know like and most people go to dance lessons when they're like a kid and then they sort of grow out of it and decide they want to do something else something else and I just kept on going but um my you know I I think the first show I ever saw was Cats and I was just obsessed with it I was obsessed with the with the dancing and it's sort of what made me want to dance and I used to put on the whole of Cats for my neighbours in the living room of my house when I was like six or seven years old so lucky them <laughs> the, whole, the whole I would just put on the soundtrack and sing the whole thing <laughs> they're like being every different character they're probably like oh my god bless them they're entertaining the kid <laughs> like yeah, really great um yeah and then I just sort of kept going from there I always danced and then I went to Italia Conti when I was 11 and okay. sort of was there through the college as well um so it's sort of just what I've always done I sort of don't remember ever not doing it <laughs> brilliant really fortunate especially the last um five or six years or so that things have been really consistent hmm. and I feel so grateful for that but I sometimes think I don't really know who else would hire me to do any other job because they'd be like well can you even do it what what can you do <laughs> like <laughs> what other experiences do you have none <laughs> uh, you know what I mean but obviously I've worked like in between jobs you know over the years but you know, if I had to go into anything sort of long term, I feel like no one else would ever hire me. They'd be like, what? You know, especially, you know, any kind of corporate environment, they look at what we do and they're like, what, are you, what is that? Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, it is seen by a lot of people still as a hobby. Yeah, it, it is. When I was um, at college and I was training, I also worked um, on reception at BMW. <laughs> there we go um and they like no one there really no one got it at all they were just sort of like what do you mean like I think they thought I would sort of work my way up the company at BMW and I was like no no like it's just a weekend job you know while I'm training to do this and they didn't even understand that people got paid yeah. you know they just think that we're all well obviously sometimes we are but they think you know that the, the, our entire life we're just doing it for fun and no one's paying us because <laughs> we love it yeah which is the case sometimes, but when yeah. you're doing like, you know, when people are in, you know, a long running contract in, in a show in town or on tour and they just think that we're just like going along for the, for the laugh, they don't even understand that we get paid anything. It's so yeah. funny. You then go, well, how do you think I pay my bills? I don't know. We didn't. Oh dear. Yeah, when when you've done like panto and stuff, particularly things like panto, people will go, "Well, you haven't rehearsed for that, surely? Like, it's, you just you're messing around on stage, and you're like, well, no, there, there, there's a rehearsal process. But why? Like, what are you rehearsing? Well, there are lines. Right. Well, you're not just making that up. No. <laughs> it's just, some things that people come out with, you just couldn't write that. Like when no. you say things, people go, "That's not true. They didn't say that." And you're like, "Oh no, they did. That, that's, that's genuinely what they think. But to be fair, on the flip side, I will see. I will say that um, sometimes you know, people do, you know, within within the industry, sometimes take things so seriously. And I'm like, let's remember that we are really lucky to do what we do. But it it is fun, and we are essentially yeah playing, playing up and singing and yeah, dancing around for a living, and that's great, you know. It's kind of like finding that balance, isn't it? You know? Yeah. Where you you realise that you're doing doing a job, you have to take it seriously to some respect, but also you know yeah you're not saving lives, you know it is. And I think that's really been highlighted at a time. Yes, <laughs> like, absolutely. Like the work that the work is that important that, that aren't. <laughs> Obviously, I say everything is important, and entertainment is so important. Of oh, course, it is, you know, yeah, all, but... in all the mediums. But um, I think 
once I, I can't remember the exact quote, but Judy Dench once said something like, you know, take your work seriously, but not yourself or something. And I really liked that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was talking to someone a couple of weeks ago, actually, and he said the same thing, you know, yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a great way to look at it. And um, moving on to like your first theatrical role, can you remember it and how you felt to be doing? Um, yeah. As in professionally? Yeah. So my first um, job was in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. That was the UK tour. Um, so I started that in 2008. Um, and I, at first, was in the ensemble and then I was um, the alternate narrator. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, like, still a kid. <laughs> if I remember, like, I was, like, I mean, a kid. Like, now I'm, like, I was a child. I was 12, you know. It seems like such a long time ago. But, um, but... And we did 12 shows a week, you know, every Saturday we did three show days, two o'clock, five o'clock and eight o'clock. Everyone who's done that tour knows the deal and you just become, you know, I think it's sort of a cliche thing to say that in shows people become families. But on that tour, because the schedule is so crazy, you really do because all you have is each other. (laughs) But obviously I think it is, you know, everyone in the show was on the younger sides so everyone still had like a great time everyone still went out all the time and you know we would go out on a Friday night before like three shows on a Saturday and now I'm like what are we thinking <laughs> what <laughs> but I had the best time and it also set me up for thinking an eight show week is not so bad ever <laughs> of course well, yeah because you've literally just finished one show and then you've got to get ready for the next one and then yeah. like you say on a Saturday you've then got to do it a third time it's like oh god yeah and yeah. it's not, you know like I don't know everybody feels differently about it I guess but because it's such an upbeat show hmm. there's nothing other than upbeat that you can be so it's like oh god but you can't you know it's high energy but it is only an hour and 40 minutes long so you know it's the first act is over in a flash yeah, flies by so, yeah so that's nice but um yeah so I did that for two years uh Two years of 12 shows a week. And I think we had one week off for the entire stint. Oh, God. So that was crazy. But I think, you know, I was really young. And yeah. I didn't, and I, it was my first job. I didn't know any different. I just was having yeah. best the time. best time. You know, we were all just having fun. And it was, I remember, I don't have, I remember, you know, the crazy schedule. But I don't have any sort of like, not fond memories of it I just remember having a great time <laughs> yeah, no, like now there although you would be loving it you would there would be moments where you'd be like oh god I just need to. this is a slog yeah. Yeah. yeah it's crazy isn't it you look back on things and you think why was that not horrific <laughs> why I just love every moment of that but yeah you do you know great so we'd always seek out the best the night life that we could and you know we'd all just go and hang out and eat out together and everyone from what I remember got on well <laughs> so yeah. yeah it was just a really good time and um if roles were reversed and you could play any male character in a musical what character would it be well whenever they have these role reversal miscast concerts I always um go for Tony from West Side Story just so I can sing a song about my own name which has sort of become a bit of a running joke (laughs) just so I could sing the most beautiful sound I ever heard about (laughs) about my own name (laughs) because that's my kind of sense of humor but (laughs) actually if I I think if it was any show I I love the last five years it's my favorite musical but I'd also love it to switch because I just like boys songs I love Jamie's songs in the last years um but yeah yeah, so that would be my one. But whenever I have to sing anything at concerts, I always sing Maria from West Side Story as Tony. <laughs> I love that. That's great. So silly. Um, and if um, is there a song that you that's your go to song that you always, you know, maybe at showcases or anything that you just love to sing? Yes, it's always Journey to the Past from Anastasia. I even just posted a video the other day and I think the quote was, just a song that no one's ever heard me sing before. <laughs> because a lot of people, you know, we're, you know, we're getting asked to video songs and things to just keep things going. Um, and I actually really hate recording myself singing. I don't really enjoy singing as myself. Like I love singing as a character. I love being in a show and playing a character. But 
you know, just singing at myself at concerts makes me nervous enough, let alone just like me and a screen, like there's nothing else to see. Um, I don't really sing in my house or in the shower. And it's sort of one of the only songs that I would feel comfortable putting, you know, even putting down on a tape. So yeah. I just have always enjoyed singing it. Beautiful song. Do you have um, a dream role? Is there a role that you'd love to play or a show that you'd love to be involved in? Um, I, I, I was said this when I was speaking to someone else the other week. Um, Glinda was like my dream dream role. I was really lucky with that. Um, and but then when I did King and I, like Anna had not been on my radar as a role, you know, sort of any time really in the near future. I don't think I'd really thought about it that much. Yeah. And it was just by far like the best experience of my life. Like I loved it so much and it sort of made me think oh maybe you know the the dream roles aren't always the ones that sort of turn out to be the experiences that you enjoyed the most so not saying that I didn't I, I mean I loved doing Wicked I loved playing yeah. Glinda, but I think I think you know everything has its expectation doesn't it so because okay. like that was like the absolute top you know that what that's what it's going to be but then when you sort of walk into something and it sort of hasn't been on your radar then it takes you a bit more by surprise when it's an ex you know when it's the experience that the king and I was so I sort of thought well, maybe I'll just sort of throw the whole dream role thing out of the window and just see what happens but I will say that Eliza Doolittle has always been um a dream role and I would love to do anything like Anastasia or anything you know Disney anything Disney-ish or Julie Andrews-ish yeah. always up my street but um yeah, Eliza Doolittle sort of like one that I would really love to do if there was the production of it ever. Um, yeah. One of my dogs is growling. Um, but yeah, other than that, just sort of, I mean, so after this, whatever comes along, you know. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Like you say, sometimes, you know, you have expectations of things. And um, even if they meet exactly what your yeah. expectation was, um, when you don't really have not an opinion but a particularly uh, strong feeling towards something and it comes along and it actually blows your mind you go oh my exactly. god yeah um, has there been a favorite place that you've visited either on a tour or um when in a in a show that you've just loved um we were really lucky with king and i because we went to japan with that um so that was amazing. you know amazing um because i'd never been over that side of the world before um and it was just so interesting, like such an interesting culture and absolutely just loved experiencing all of that, you know, because we were like in the in the centre of Tokyo where it was all happening. Yeah. <laughs> it made London seem quiet. It was such a crazy, crazy. <laughs> um, and we also went to Zurich, um, which, again, was beautiful because we went and it was when it was like November and we had a weekend and we all got to go out to the mountains and it was honestly one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. So, you know, they're the two places that I've sort of gone furthest with, with any job. And I've loved both of them. I sort of would love to do an international job because yeah, I love yeah. travel. Travel sort of my number one priority in life, you know, to sort of work to save money to travel and see yeah. more of the world. So if there was an international job, I would snap it up in a heartbeat because I just love seeing the world so yeah Japan and Zurich have been sort of the the nicest places that I've been to on a job because they're the only ones that have really been abroad so. yeah. well I guess oh, like you kind of like it's a passion to go traveling and and see different places of the world you kind of get to do do things that you love at the same time you know most people would would love that that's yeah, and has there a place that you'd love to see in the world more than anywhere else? Oh, God. Um, just so many places. I would love to go to South Africa and do a safari, but I don't think I'll be doing that on a job. But <laughs> <laughs> Literally at the top of my list. That and Canada, those are the places I really want to go. Yeah. I'd like to go to Cuba as well. Um, yeah, just and then places like Peru honestly anywhere I just want to go everywhere <laughs> anywhere I can I'd love to I got really lucky we had um also we were really lucky when we were in Japan because our shows were at like midday or 2 p.m so we had all of the rest of our days and evenings free so we got yeah. to 
explore so much, which was great. But we had a seven week break after Japan. So I actually stayed out and traveled around um, Vietnam and Indonesia and Thailand. So, you know, we, I sort of got the opportunity to stay out and travel a bit of Southeast Asia. And that was one of the best experiences of my life. So anything that gets me anywhere in the world is good by me. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. It just makes you appreciate things, I think. When you see how other people live and, and, and what other people have. Yeah, absolutely. For me, you know, there's I haven't done a lot of traveling, but I, I would love to, to see more of the world. But yeah, you just and being given that that opportunity of time because you just don't have it, do you? Exactly. Apart from now, we have the opportunity of time. We just can't go anywhere with <laughs> I know. that's the most frustrating thing isn't it you know you kind of think, never get this time again no I know and you're like there's never sometimes you look at your year and you're like I've literally had seven days off this year yeah and now you've had seven weeks off and you're like I haven't even you know been out of the county it's so crazy it's a really funny old time isn't it a lot of it, up and down days oh god yeah definitely and um is there a skill or a hobby that you'd love to pick up um I've always wanted to play the piano which is funny because I have a piano okay. <laughs> I have for a really long time and I just haven't done it and I have sort of intended to this in this time but I have really been going for the DIY in my house because I you know I bought my house like a year and a half ago and it was a real project but then I sort of went on tour so I didn't have time to do anything and um, so now I'm just sort of single-handedly trying to put it together but um I have intended to sort of start trying to do maybe an hour of of piano a day because I can play it very I can play basic piano but yeah it might be better and I'd also love to learn a language yeah I'd love to learn Italian <laughs> And, um you could recreate any Hollywood film or iconic roles what would they be oh um that's a hard one because the thing is a lot of those sort of roles have been made into musicals and you know what I mean they've been made into musicals so yeah um oh god that's a really hard one listen I love a horror movie do you? Not really one for a re. If we're talking like film remakes, I'm not really massively one for a remake anyway. I just love the classics. Yeah. If I had to choose, I'd love to do something like Carrie because I just think that film is. I just love that film so much, and I think Sissy Spacek is amazing, and it's so creepy. Horror film. Horror is my favorite film genre. So. <laughs> If it was going to be anything, I think it would have to be a horror film. Yeah. Really surprised me. <laughs> I have no desire really to work in film or TV. I love stage. It's all I've ever really wanted to do. Yeah, but yeah. if I was to ever do anything film or TV, I've always said I would just want to, it to be horror because I just <laughs> love a horror movie. I'd love to like... I did like an independent, so I basically, my like bucket list thing was to do a horror movie where I got killed first and I did an independent one a few, quite a few years ago now actually, but like if I ever was to do a proper film, I'd love to be like the girl who's killed first in a horror film. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, yeah, I literally, I, I was expecting you to say, um, yeah, something totally different, I did expect you Like to an Audrey Hepburn in Breakfast at Tiffany's or something like that, but. No, I would love to recreate a classic horror movie. Yeah, they're never, the new ones are never as scary, I don't think, because I think there's something about that sort of old, you know, classic style that just makes it creepy. And now everything is so, effects are so great. It's sort of, you know. Yeah. It's, it's what it is, and I love that old style. So, but yeah, I'd love to, to redo Carrie because she's just terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I honestly, can't even sit through a trailer of something like that <laughs> no do you know what I am so proud of myself that I you'll probably giggle at this for someone who likes horror films but I sat through um a jumpy film have you seen the quiet place or a quiet yeah. place? literally loved I love the film I think it's the concept is exceptional but like I yeah I went to see that with a friend and um yeah I nearly broke her hand because I was just terrified <laughs> Bit. and of course because it's so you know you go to the cinema for that cinematic experience yeah but I, like, 
I did not like the fact that I could like nothing would happen and then someone would like from the phantom you're like <laughs> I, I'm a friend who will be like oh to my friend like in the middle of the film if I know that they're scared <laughs> Yeah, well, my friend, she like, I could feel her like releasing my hand. I was like, what are you doing? And she was like, my hand's getting warm, Jen, like chill. This, there's not going to be a jumpy bit for a while. We've just had a jumpy bit. I was like, get your hand back. I was like, I'm the worst, honestly. See, sometimes my friends will message me and it'll be like four in the afternoon and I'm at home on my own and I'll be watching a horror film. And they're like, you're so weird. <laughs> on your own, absolutely. Yeah, all the time. I mean, I watch them. I like, I have them on when I'm in bed at night. Like they don't faze me at all. Was, so the weirdest thing is, I I mean, I'm not, you know, horror films don't scare me at all. And I can watch them any time of day or night and not be bothered. However, I am terrified of E.T. Oh, God. But that is one funky looking thing, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Everyone else is always like, he's so cute. But when I say terrified, like terrified, if I see a picture, it ruins the rest of my day. Like if I see, come across a picture. It, it's a real, irras- a real irrational but very strong fear. And people think it's funny. So they then think that they... Oh, oh, no. one of my best friends when we were I think like 16 or 17 he thought it would be funny and he bought me an ET toy as a present I didn't speak to him for a year <laughs> like up in front of him <laughs> I was so upset it oh. is really bad oh my god <laughs> nothing else scares me really apart from ET even though I know it's not real yeah <laughs> uh. Oh, it, it's it's weird looking. Yeah, they did that weird. Was it however many years since the film? I've not even seen the film. I've just seen like clips of it. It does not interest me at all. That kind of thing. Um, and <laughs> just giving us shivers. They brought out a Christmas advert, and I was like, "It's oh, on Twitter." That's you what mute, mute me. <laughs> that's what I mean. They brought that out, and I was like, "Yeah, I remember." I was sat with um friends at the time. We were watching something, and it came on, and everyone was like, "Oh, cute!" And I was like, "That is the ugliest looking thing." And all of my friends were like, oh, "How dare you!" And I was like, "I understand." Funky. My parents took me on the ET ride when I was seven in Flor in um Disney or Universal. I can't remember what park it is. When I was like seven to try and help. Uh, anyway, at the end, so basically, obviously, they give you give in your name at the beginning, but I was a child, so I didn't know that because then at the end, he's there and he says, Bye, Maria. <gasps> he says, no. Bye, everyone, and their name. And I was like, Well, that's that's it. I'm dying. He's coming to get me. And I think I had to go on It's a Small World like four times to get over it. That proper haunted you. <laughs> Horrendous. And I think it was to help, but it did not help. It hindered it totally. <laughs> I think it pushed it over the edge. <laughs> I'll never forget hearing that voice saying, bye, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. That's so funny. And um, do you have, like, a favourite go-to recipe? Like, if you were, if you had friends over to cook, like, well, who, what would you make them? Or are you not, are you a takeaway, I'm going to have to buy it in rather than a cook it person? Um, me and my friends actually do quite often like to order in just because we like to get a takeaway and wine and sort of make a night of it like that but I didn't really cook that much until about a year and a half ago I went um vegan and I'm sort of back to being vegetarian at the moment <laughs> I've like gone backwards which is not very good but um and that forced me to cook a lot more so I cook a lot of chilies so you know of my friends they'd probably say that's my best thing and they always love my chili but it's also really the only thing I've ever cooked for them so they don't have much to measure it against but I find it I'm not really someone who just cooks one meal you know I won't cook for myself every day just one meal I'll do a batch so it lasts me for you know four or five days and things like chilies and pastas and things like that I just I'm not a huge cook but I've learned to do a few things well Italian food is my favorite Yeah. yeah I absolutely love it Italian food and sushi but obviously now I just eat vegetable sushi are my favorite foods I'd be really upset if I couldn't eat them (laughs) (laughs) yeah they're my favorite um yeah but I I'm not fussy at all the only thing I don't like is mustard I literally eat anything no not me and I and I do eat anything and everything and a lot of it (laughs) yeah I'm pretty good I I like (laughs) I'm, I'm a bit weird though like I don't like jam but I like jammy dodgers I'm, I'm one of those strange people people will always be like she's eating a jammy dodger but she won't eat the jam in the cake I feel like jam in jammy dodgers and normal jam are quite different things though I like both but I can see the difference oh see 
this is this is a good chap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a jammy dodge is more just like a sort of sticky treat, you know. I love a jammy dodger. I like the thing that's not nutritionally good for you yeah, at all. Always, always. That's that's what we want <laughs> every time. Um, summer coming up now. What would you have? Like, what would be your go-to refreshment? Would you go for an ice cream or a lolly, or would you go for a drink? Um, I love ice cream. It's my my thing. You know, everyone has their sort of fa- their favourite sort of treat, and yeah. ice cream is my mint chocolate chip ice cream is the one standard. Is mm-hmm. the absolute one. Drink wise, margarita is my favourite drink. Okay. If, we're, if we're talking al- alcoholic, yeah, it's my favourite go to drink. Yeah. And my last question for you is, what will you be doing next after? Do you know? Do you know what's coming up for you? After the lockdown is over, and um, no, because the the tour I was doing, the King and I tour, was due to finish mid May anyway. Um, so obviously they couldn't sort of postpone it till the lockdown lifted because that's going to be we're going to be mid May in, in a heartbeat. Um, so yeah, it was just sort of starting to get back into auditioning for things for later in the year, you know, yeah. in sort of just as this happened really um I I think that they may be might take it out again but that's you know it's everything is sort of up in the air at the moment if they did do another tour um especially if it went you know international then I think I would definitely want to do I love being part of the show I love the role yeah. and I want to travel but yeah just who knows I'll be trying to get a job with people saying but what can you do yeah yeah <laughs> we're trying to just get you know a sort of a regular day-to-day job until something else comes up but I sort of I'm fine with it you know I'm just I'm when I was younger I think I used to really worry about the long term but I have become much more of a take each day as it comes kind of person yeah. so when it happens I'll just I'm like when that happens I'll figure it out then you know so but at the moment no idea no clue yeah, I think that's the thing. You know, I'm I'm one of life's planners, and, and I'm one of life's. I'm, I I'm, I love a look forward to moment. I love that, and particularly with the kids, you know, it's it's always constant. We've got a show, and then after that show, what are you doing? So so my life has become, even my personal life has become that. What's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Um, but this has really kind of taught me that you have to. Yeah, yeah you yeah. just roll with it sometimes, yeah. and it. Yeah, definitely chills you out a little bit more. Um, I think it's hard to know what the sort of landscape of theatre will be when this all lifts anyway. I There's so much speculation and I try not to read into any of it because no one knows. No. But I would assume that we'll need to see how... Obviously, the long-running shows will be the ones to reopen. And I would assume that we will need to see how they go before taking the risk of opening something new. I should imagine. You know, I might be completely wrong and, you know, people might just go for it and take the risk, but that is just my, that's my assumption. Yeah. Based on nothing. But, um, you know, so I presume it's all going to take a while. So yeah. I will just go and get a job doing whatever someone will give me until we yeah, yeah. all figure it out. And yeah. then we'll just go from there. You know, like I said, I've been really fortunate for the past, you know, five or six years that things have been consistent. So I'm due a period of working, you know, doing something else for a bit. And that's great. I actually don't, you know, I, I welcome those kinds of times. It's lovely even to work a, a job where you can go for dinner with your friends at seven in the evening. You know, there's positives to sort of every of course. thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course there is. And I think that's the thing, you know, even at this really awful time, we wouldn't want it again. We don't wish that it happened at all. But actually, there have been some hidden positives to do it. You know, that that break that um, just sometimes the feeling within yourself has has changed. You know, your attitude towards certain things might not change, but it you might see a different side of things, I guess. Yeah, I think you I think people will maybe not that people necessarily do, but you know, we all every, and obviously people will moan again, we all moan at times, but I think 
the things that we sometimes take for granted we won't anymore yeah, we'll be a little bit more appreciative I think of normal life and I think the value of things you know hmm. even just I am such a shopaholic but at the beginning of this year me and one of my best friends made a pact that we wouldn't buy any clothes for a year I mean I do not need to like I have so many clothes it's disgusting um and this has made it really easy like this <laughs> happening has made that easy to not buy anything but also it sort of made me look at all the stuff I already had and be like what does this stuff even mean like because it's just I'm just in my house with all this stuff and it doesn't mean anything you know so I think people's perspectives on things yeah will have changed a little I think I think materialistic things kind of have gone by the wayside whereas yeah very, well I appreciate very, time with people absolutely. more than things you know yeah it's about the the opportunities the experiences the moments I think you know in in like you were saying about come full circle now about Joseph you know that it was a a really on paper what the hell is that job why would anyone want to do it but what a moment what a time period for you and I think that's the thing isn't it it's looking at it like that yeah because you know I would happily I would much rather go and spend a day with my friend drinking coffee wearing the worst outfit ever than actually care about having loads of clothes in my cupboard that are going to look great you know you know does that make sense yeah, you know? absolutely well, yeah, what is having all these clothes that look great but nowhere to go? You know, exactly. It's just, it, it's definitely been more, become more about people. Yeah, and also if you think about it, you know, you have a laugh and a joke with your friends, I don't know what you're like, but like with my friends, you know, you, you do take the mick out of one another and you do laugh at each other, don't you? Because that's what friendship, part of friendship is. But oh. they fundamentally don't care what it is that you're wearing. They don't care what it is. No, absolutely. It, all about the time that you spend with each other the things that you can share and, and trust within each other that's the most important thing isn't it and I do also think that communication wise this has forced people to reconnect with communicating with people because we live in a world of such disconnect because of social media which I really hate anyway and I do try and talk to my friends a lot I was lucky I would get a lot of time to do that because obviously I was work I've been working as a standby for the past few years so I would have time whilst at work to always make the effort to speak to my friends and I think communication is so important and I think I'm just a little bit older than when social media kicked off you know so that was sort of how I was anyway um but um I think it's forced people to reach out rather than just relying on the fact that they look happy in their latest Instagram picture or they're tweeting something that makes them sound like they're happy. People yeah, yeah. have the time and it's forcing them to reach out to their friends and say, hey, how are you doing? And actually have a real life conversation. You know? yeah, yeah, and I think that's really important because I think yeah, as a society, we've lost our way on how to do that a bit. Well, thank you so much for right. thank you for having me. <laughs> been lovely and um i will send you the link when this goes up um on the channel yay amazing thank you for having me i hope you have a lovely weekend enjoy your weekend it's like what is end anymore you can paint some doors <laughs> <Are you>? yeah <laughs> brilliant your, your house will be like a brand new house by the time you finish it really will <laughs> it really will your family like what happened I know happen? when my housemate moved he's back in Ireland at the moment but when he moves back he'll be like what's happened yeah. what what did you do <laughs> yeah so much my love take care you too bye a huge thank you to Maria I hope you've enjoyed all the fantastic people I've had on all the amazing stories and I hope it's made you smile a few more still to come Take care, everybody. Goodbye.